yeah, it's totally different, folks. No lycra allowed. We all have to wear uh, business outfits, suits and ties, and all sorts of things. And then we've got a strong field of riders taking part in our 17 kilometer race. Come on, then, let's get on these boards now. All under. Make some noise on the board. Three, two, one. Hop, 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 hop. Eventual love ride, love it. Classic, classic is about to begin. to get you being the, uh, the noise and the excitement for this race. So let's see you on these balls. Come on, you should know what to do by now.
Ride London Classic. We have 12 laps of 5.5 kilometres. So buckle yourselves into your sofas, to be honest, because this is going to be quick. It's part of the Women's Tour. It's round 13 indeed, and it's a joy to be here with uh, uh, alongside Matt Stevens. They're just making the turn at the halfway down the strand, actually. I'm not sure they've, uh, they've got a chance to visit the Ritz. They'll probably be thinking about that a little bit later. That's almost a dead stop, as you can see, even at this pace. So there's not going to be much uh, room to make amends if you get things wrong in a whole sequence of laps in this part of the circuit. Hannah Barnes, you see the British champion there as well. We're just about to be released. You have missed absolutely nothing, and you've found the best venue for this, the home of cycling. You're very welcome. Tour de France fading in our memories, probably still alive and well for many of you. Party's only just finished for that, but now a huge celebration here in London. Ten miles of city streets locked off just for cyclists to have some fun and a whole load of racing as well. Mick Bennett is about to get us underway. The man himself with the red and white checkerboard flag. He'll be flagging them away, and this is going to be a busy start. You can see Kirsten Vilk looming larger, an enormous presence at moments such as this. She'll be up against Tiffany Cromwell, Hannah Barnes as well, all from Canyon Stram Racing. We've got uh, Bestinelli, uh, we've got uh, Cucinotta, we have so many others names to conjure with as well. Some will wrestle with as you've just heard but uh, nonetheless this is going to be a classic piece of racing and we'll show you at home just how good women's racing most certainly is they're going to pass through admiralty arch they're going to head for the mile mick bennett is going to ask for a dab on the accelerator he's then going to disappear and we will be racing here a phenomenal venue matt stevens for some great racing here and mick's decided it's now that we're going to go racing he's bobbed down he bobs away and we're underway for burst and uh, uh, some real uh, show here from uh, Rabo Live Women's Cycling. No surprise there. They've got Lucinda Brand and uh, Roxanne Neutemann also involved here. Lots of vision being taken right across the front line as everyone wants to know where everybody else is. Well, this is a fantastic start here. I mean, arguably one of the most iconic locations for a race. When I first caught sight of this course, Carl, I couldn't believe it. 5.5 kilometres. It's almost anything Paris can do, London can do better. I mean, uh, we saw La Course riding up and down the Champs-Élysées only just over a week ago. And now these world-class women cyclists are doing exactly the same on the streets of London in the shadow of Buckingham Palace. Up the mall, it's going to be a wonderful, spectacular race. Who's going to reach out first? I saw Michael Kroger, the German champion, was uh, uh, on guard duty, I think it's fair to say, over on the left-hand side. And all of a sudden, we've got a burst of pace. And it's a rally cycling who've sent, I think, Emma White and on uh, scouting duties. Uh, the American just pushing on off the front here. Some great work as well by uh, Riato from Cycle Pro, uh, from Psych Silence. Pro cycling, you won't get much silence here today. And there they head past Buckingham Palace. Incidentally, the little checkerboard garden on the right-hand side at the back of the palace, that's where you get your cucumber sandwiches if ever you're invited to a garden party. One of that will be part of the feed zone today. I, I, I'm that. hoping so. You I'll know, speak to Mick about that, maybe introduce that for next year. Mick's been cutting the edges off the sandwiches all morning. Here we go then. They uh, bury themselves uh, up to, uh, alongside some impeccably laid out cones, I have to say. Uh, this is part of our double circuit. Matt, the hairpins here are real pinch points, aren't they? They can bite, and probably will. They certainly can. As we saw in the neutral zone, it's it attacks already up this long drag. This is up uh, Constitution Hill, and as you said, Carlton, we're just rounding the corner here. A little bit discombobulating as the motorbike took that complete dog leg turn. These dog legs really, really do uh, play on the legs. Uh, uh, well, play on the legs. You get that, that dead start, then you have to accelerate out of the corner again. And the other extreme corner on the back end of the circuit is up the top end of the strand. So you can see the riders at the top almost slowing to a halt. Meanwhile, at the front, you have riders reaching speeds already of 50 kilometers an hour. You get that whiplash effect. So the place to be is at the front of the race without a shadow of a doubt, already strung out in these very, very early stages. It certainly is. Just over 62 and a half kilometers remaining of this race. And you can see straight away, we're just getting a, a brave pitch here by five. It's interesting to see the German champion, uh, Maike Kroger, who was uh, so towards the fore early on. Now, she may well be a foil for the likes of Tiffany Cromwell and uh, Hannah Barnes, whose sister, Alice, by the way, is uh, riding for the Drops cycling team, who did so well in the Matrix Fitness Series 
this year. Uh, some terrific teams, but look at the gaps here, Matt. They're starting to string out, and the elastic is already snapping. Well, some real pressure being applied at the front at the moment. I saw Danny King of Team Wiggle High Five just near the front. She's just rolling through at the front there. She's in extremely good form at the moment, really driving hard. Got riders from uh, Rabo Lib Women's Cycling Team just behind, and also Big La Pro Cycling. So already some of the big, the big hitting teams forcing the pace. And we saw at the top end of Coronation, uh, of, sorry, of Constitution Hill, that's where the riders were starting to lose the wheels a little bit. Pleasure, a pressure of pride at the front, a riders already starting to lose wheels. Tiffany Cromwell's part of this move right now. A few moments ago, uh, you, you also saw uh, a great, some great work being done by Danny King. No Olympic Games for her, but her Wiggle Honda, uh, I beg your pardon, her Wiggle High Five team are certainly extremely busy. And you can see what the pace is doing further back down, uh, further down the line. And it's taking prisoners. That's uh, Sarah Story, I think, that was uh, uh, looking like she was in a bit of trouble for uh, podium ambition as they come down to uh, 61 kilometers remaining. It's spinning down nice and quickly. These pressure points, they're going to act as uh, compression points, as you can see, uh, really do focus the mind. They cut by um, Parliament Square, and this is a big, big move being engaged right round by Roxanne uh, Netaman. Uh, she goes for it for Rabobank Live Women's Cycling, the Rabo Live team, and it's a trio that have just rolled off the front, including the Finnish champion. Well, Roxanne Knetaman, she comes from an extremely uh, prestigious cycling family. Just looks over her shoulder, flick of the elbow there from the Rabo Live Women's Cycling Team rider. This is the first significant break where we've got very, very high pace from the off. Remember, this is actually the first lap. The first lap we saw was a neutralized lap, so the riders had a 5.5 kilometer opportunity to just check out the course but another rider in the mix there it looks like a uh, lot of Lepisto of Cervelo Bigler in the Finnish champion just sat third wheel and one of the riders from the Great Britain cycling team the young cycling squad managed by uh, former scratch race champion of the world Chris Newton and a, a rider I crossed swords on many many occasions in the past a very capable young team trying to cross this gap early in the race Kim Debat is uh, dead center of this trio right now Kim Debat the uh, Belgian from Lens World they they make lenses as opposed to to the world of a chap called Len. Uh, but uh, yeah, the trio are out front. It's going to turn into a quintet for the time being. Alarm bells going on from Ali Cipollini. They're sending satellite riders all over the road, trying to find a bit of traction and space at the moment. But here we are, five, and I'm afraid going back is uh, Kim Debat at the moment. There are some drag points upon this course, Matt. Well, there are a couple of drags. It's a bit of a drag up Whitehall and then up the Strand, and they drop down a bit, pick up some speed as they come back through Admiral, the, um, Admiral Arch, then through the Mall, and then, of course, they've got that drag up Constitution Hill as well. So this isn't a flat circuit at all. No significant climbs, but some nasty drags. And again, let's talk about these dog legs again. Very, very difficult indeed. You slow right down, really shave the speed off to almost just a couple of miles an hour walking speed in effect and then you have to accelerate out again great shot here just look at the oh. whiplash effect you've got the the rod accelerating on the front of the bunch and riders still yet to round that back corner well uh, it's amazing actually a huge uh, compression there you saw them uh, two wide out of the corner eight wide going in uh, so clearly it's the, uh, the standing on a tube of toothpaste effect with a whole load left behind and those out front just able to shoot away. Kim Debak's made it back onto this uh, uh, note. It's a quartet that's gone and uh, Kim Debak looks a little bit second hand after that little drag up Constitution Hill. Uh, coming back down it of course and then uh, past Buckingham Palace down the Spur Road uh, to Birdcage Walk. And um, no bird walk here, I'm afraid, as they go down to Great George Street, then they'll make that turn again at Parliament Square. It's spinning down nicely, this map. Um, there's some speculated that the women's race might last getting on for two hours. No way at this pace. Not at this speed at all, as they just go under Admiralty Arch for the second time. Again, I'll say it again, absolutely wonderful setting for a bike race. Very, very aggressive indeed. But back to your point, Carlton, now they'll be racing at far more than an average speed of 33 k's an hour. Extremely fast already, and many, many riders in difficulty. And that looks like Annesley Park for Great Britain. Well, no, she's sorry, it. sorry, it's not the Great Britain rider, sorry, that's the, the Rabo Live rider on the front. Annesley Park didn't manage to get across, but a rider that definitely is there is a rider from BTC City, Lubjana just rolling through on the front so an interesting composition and just coming across that gap now trying to get in the aero tuck Carlton one of the riders from the Ali Cipollini team Oh, B Pink have made it into the break as well and done a superb job Ali Cipollini were looking uh, a bit bereft I, I believe that's Medvedova from uh, B Pink uh, the Slovakian who's made her way over 
and uh, there we see the German champion dead center of proceedings. Kirsten Wilt as well hasn't uh, hasn't spent anything just for the time being in terms of uh, overt use of energy. Biding your time, I think. This may not be the break that makes it. It's a long way to go, man. Still a long, long way to go. Still well over 60 kilometers. But just look at the way. Look at the shape of the peloton here. No real team starting to chase. But again, that is a pretty strong team at the moment that's starting to drag clear. But interestingly, lots of Lepisto perhaps uh, thinking about Ashley Moulman for the finish. Lepisto doesn't seem to be riding too hard on the front. So it's up to several of the other teams just to start riding hard, but we do have a wonderful, rich and diverse team, some of the best riders in the world for this race, and a wonderfully appreciative crowd here in the centre of London. We all high five on great monitoring duties here, no surprise there. Here's your head of your race right now. Um, I don't think that is uh, Spore, actually. I, I think that's an error. I think it's uh, Zonchuk. Uh, by the way, the Russia from uh, Lens World, I may well be wrong, Will, uh, have been in the past. <laughs> there we are, Cipollini just making it in. It's uh, the number 24, which is uh, uh, Taglia Ferro, just uh, tagging onto the back, aptly named then, down to this hairpin. And as you can see, the motorcycle's almost coming to a dead stop as they make the turn. There's not a lot of room to play with. And just look at this. Here we are, those through at the beginning. And look at the compression here. You may even see riders unclipping as it gets to a, a virtual standstill. It's like a slow bicycle race for those behind. It's a tough thing to manage this early on. It certainly is. And as you said, the riders almost having to come to a track stand to keep their balance. This is a great on-bike bit of footage here from Kirsten Wild from High Tech. One of the strongest riders in the race and clearly Without a doubt, one of the favourites. She's got such a stinging finish. Very, very powerful rider indeed. Won the Tour de Yorkshire earlier in the year. But she has to be one of the favourites. But she hasn't managed to get in this move at the moment. And there you go. There's the rider just on the back for Ali Cipollini. That's Marta Tagliaferro. With the bunched. Just starting to bear down on our six leaders. Well, it is uh, Kazonchuk, the Russian. <clears throat> I was absolutely right. That's in the break, so... Uh, that sound you can hear in the background is a, a graphics man's fingers being broken. Uh, but there you go. Here we are then. Five, six riders have made it up to the four. And indeed, uh, this is a reasonable fighting force. and They've opened up a decent gap in there. Well, uh, Roxanne Kanateman there riding very, very strongly on the front. She's just uh, letting the other rider take, take her turn on the front. Just rolling through for BTC City Lugjana. That is Spila Kern. Looking very, very stylish on her Scott bike there. Doing a long, long turn on the front. But it looks like the team that I glimpsed that was starting to try and organize their troops at the front. And they're one of the bigger teams that have missed this split. And that's the team of Wiggle High Five. And they've got Chloe Hoshking amongst their number, as well as Danny King. So two riders who are definitely favorites for this race. Chloe Hoshking fresh off the win in La Course. But uh, Wiggle Honda are going to want, well, Wiggle High Five, so are going to want a little bit of assistance at the front as we just start to pitch up this little drag. Well, it's a quality group we've got at the moment. On this, a, uh, an event which, incidentally, is the highest paid women's cycling race one day in the world. 25,000 euros up for grabs for the winner. There is 25,000 euros for the winner, 10,000 euros for the best team and an equal prize purse for both the men's and women's event. We've obviously got the Ride London Classic tomorrow of 100,000 euros. Uh, both, respectively, the most, uh, well, the richest men's and women's races in the world ever. So that is really something to say. Well, it's it's the centrepiece, really, of a three-day cycling festival that started yesterday. We'll finish tomorrow with the men's race. And quite frankly, the crowds here have been uh, outstanding, extraordinarily well behaved. See the London uh, Boris buses, are we allowed even to mention his name these days? Mm. Um, all parked up on the left hand side of the road. A little buzz of disapproval there from, uh, uh, from Matt. I think it was about the buses he's going to try and get home later on. Uh, there we are, passing the pits area as well. Lots of encouragement likewise to those out front. And it looks, Matt, like the uh, break has come to a close. Good early skirmish though. We're going to have to keep an eye on this. We're going to go to a commercial break in a few moments' time. But what a backdrop. And London at its very best. And I think Mick Bennett and everybody else who've uh, helped to organise this uh, could give themselves a huge slap on the back. It's a fantastic event. And you're enjoying it live here on Eurosport.
Can't keep a good cyclist down. You've got to be a good cyclist if you're going to be Dutch champion. Anushka Costa has gone for it, and it's a sprint lap which pays dividends, and she'd like some of that, quite frankly. It's uh, it's about more than, uh, than than beer money out here, and <laughs> why not? Um, it's Lauren Roney, I believe, the Australian, who's uh, gone with her as well. Uh, double check on that in a few moments' time for you. In fact, uh, I think it's one of the uh, beat pink riders, is it? Here we go, then. There's your finish champion back uh, in the hunt with drops cycle as well it's a great time to go for this when you just round one of the hairpins uh, it's a great attack point to my mind the best of them of all is when you come in to that section that inexorably leads back to Admiralty Arch you pass by it at Trafalgar Square and then there are eight corners in very very short order we're on board here with Lucy Garner and you can see just how busy it is out there man yeah it just shows some of the pain on the face of the rider already that's actually Claire Rose just on the front for podium ambition, an extremely strong rider. She was second this year in the British Time Trial Championships, so very, very strong. And she was in action the other day in the centre of Birmingham in the uh, British uh, uh, Circuit Race Championships, where she spent almost half of the race on the front. She is mightily strong, and she has drawn a little group clear. It looks like Danny King from Wiggle High Five has just made contact, along with one of the Great Britain riders, Ali Cipollini, also there. Representative from Canyon Tram, also in the mix. So all the big teams that you'd expect are now at the head of affairs. And just look at the way this build is strung out under the pressure being forced and applied at the front. Fantastic racing, still a long, long way to go. So around Buckingham Palace, and uh, that, <coughs> that uh, familiar sort of flag-waving fly past, uh, happy smiley royals area uh, here we are we're leaving that right now not meaning to sound republican it just <laughs> came out that way uh, birdcage walk uh, we head down to uh, great george street and then we take a, uh, a left past uh, uh, up parliament street incidentally past horse guards it'll be whitehall and when you say these names like the strand the mile buckingham palace it really is something to behold. What a great city to be able to play with here in the highest prize in women's cycling. And they're racing for it, as you can see. There's no amble here. They're not all riding together and just waiting for this one to gradually reveal itself and maybe have a group go off the front. Everybody wants to get involved. All the teams have an action plan. Well, plans, of course, you shred them whenever somebody else's plans start to interfere with your own. And right now, it's really difficult to gauge this one. There's so much talent here. It certainly is Carlton, it's uh, the BTC City Ljubljana team on the attack again. Just drawing clear one of the riders from Silence Pro Cycling, the American squad in the green, black and white kit. So many decent squads here as they just round this corner. It's just at the back end is Dame Sarah Story, one of the most decorated Olympians. Just biding her time at the moment, just sitting last wheel, reminding me of the way Steve Cummings rides in the men's ranks. But Indeed. another counter-attack here. Lubjana really aggressive early in this race. You can't counter out, Matt. Um, uh, she sits in that position occasionally. That gets called to action and, and quite often delivers absolutely beautifully. Uh, the field is uh, reasonably compact, and I think possibly the course has got something to do with that. You have these high-speed sections. Nobody's allowed to settle here. It's very difficult to find a rhythm, Matt, because you're almost as a constant either accelerating or slowing down on this course yeah it's um it's not quite a criterion course not quite a city center circuit and it's also a little bit smaller than what we call a kermess it's a it's kind of a hybrid kermess um that city center criterion <laughs> but it's uh, but it's a wonderful course oh, and as with it, that as it, yeah, like, yeah let's call it a hybrid city center kermess course i'm sure mick bennett would be pleased with that <laughs> but what it provides for is some very exciting racing plenty of opportunities for the riders to attack although the, the circuit clearly has some quite technical elements on it. It also has those really nasty pinch points, those dead turns that really do, after uh, many, many laps and, and the repetition, they really start to pay, well, wreak havoc with the legs, because coming to a dead turn midway through a race and accelerating hard really, really uh, does, uh, well, it starts to eat into the reserves. It's all about making sure you to maintain as much energy as you can. Uh, <clears throat> this is Radatic doing a great job just about to uh, bridge over I think it's honestly Dom or the Belgian from Lens world um, I don't know who Len is uh, but his world is a fascinating one and he's sponsored uh, Lens world Zenata. it's actually an optical company uh, here we go here's that uh, big compression point as you can see the escape 
from that is a joyous thing. If you're up in the top 10 on the approach to these hairpins, Matt, you get an enormous advantage. Well, you come in, you come into that corner, you accelerate out. We just saw a couple of riders on the inside, literally almost having to put their foot down. They'd slowed down so much. And you can gain 10 or 15 seconds just at the front. We've seen another split being forced clear here. This is Alice Azufi of uh, the aforementioned Lensworld team. Just in the white kit there, it's going clear with a rider from Ljubljana. So these pinch points, these dead turns do really provide an opportunity. And then one of the Rabo Live riders just trying to get across this gap. Because again, so many riders are aggressive. This is a course that suits many, many different styles of riders. Suits the sprinter, suits the punchers, and suits the riders who like the longer affairs as well. This is uh, the American Lauren Hall, uh, team principal for Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. Um, they sound techy enough to be well and truly involved. And Rabo Live Women's Cycling have sent a satellite up the road. I think it's Teniglo, and I'll have to wait to uh, just to uh, confirm that for you in a few moments' time. But Lauren Hall is there, and just tagging in on the back of it, it's, gosh, it's Lucinda Brown. What a, uh, what a star turn to have involved in this quartet. Twice a national champion, Lucinda Brown. Missed out on it last time by, but you can see uh, the national flag upon her uh, sleeves here with a hint of orange. And it's that sprint that they're coming up to right now. It, uh, it means uh, more than just money, this map. There's a lot of pride at stake, this and she takes it. This she takes it very well there. And in doing so, just drags that uh, quartet a little bit further clear. The Great Britain team now on the front, but just see the way the peloton just spread out across the road. And that effort did certainly take it out of Radicic. She sprinted hard to try and get that preem. And it really has taken a little bit out of her legs as the breakaway just starts to leave her behind. And it looks like in a few moments' time she'll be reabsorbed by the peloton on the white tarp on the sorry on the white on the red tarmac of the moor. Yes, indeed, uh, red tarmac for a very good reason. It uh, mimics a red carpet and um, rolling it out today. So here we are. There is your first Sprint Prime. I'm not sure what the prize money is for Sprint Primes. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know. As we said, it's an extremely rich prize purse. I've no doubt it is extremely generous. Well, our start list. Oh, yes. It, it, it is. I'm going to stick with Lucinda Brand. I'm sure it's her. It is Lucinda Brand. It, yes. it is. Yes, indeed. She, she looks like she got uh, 167, but it's just the way the numbers have been, uh, <clears throat> have been done here. I was just... Uh, double questioning myself but it is twice two times Dutch champion Lucinda Brand who takes it good work by her good work by everybody as well as we continue up uh, the mile by the way Constitution Hill which spears past Green Park do you know why it's called Constitution Hill I think you're about to tell me uh, Charles II used to take a constitutional walk um, for his own constitution between the parks Buckingham Park Gardens and Green Park and he used to do it up Constitution Hill every single day uh, there was a suspicion as well that he'd meet a mistress or two as well in in uh, Green Park, as it became known as Green Park. Um, and as a result, the Queen ordered all the flowers to be taken out. They were stripped out of Green Park, so it's, that's why it's called Green Park these days. No flowers, because Charles II, while he was on his morning constitutional, um, turned it into something a bit more illicit. The Queen didn't like it, so Catherine uh, Braganza said, get these flowers out of this park, and they did. A little bit of extra here, and um, plenty you, you being given as well. You learn something every day here on the home of cycling, don't you, without a shadow of a doubt. You don't get it anywhere else, this stuff. No. Um, <laughs> there we are then, um, past the fountains, which um, strangely are not active today. Maybe just uh, the, 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 the risk of spray making the uh, road surface a little damp, and so they've turned off the pumps. Why stuff? Pump, yeah, definitely a good idea, because as you say, if you, all you need is a few gusts of, gusts of wind or a relatively uh, blowy day, and you get that moisture on the top of the road, and we don't want any riders slipping off. So far, so good. Everybody's upright, and we've seen a fast, furious, very, very aggressive race. It's the sort of course, as we said, that lends itself to really aggressive racing, especially when you combine the fact you're riding past some of the most iconic sites in the world, urged on by a wonderful crowd too. There's the London Eye, there's the Thames. What more could you want? How did you spot that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a big polo in the centre of the picture. Uh, do you know what? The French got really jealous about the London Eye and they decided to have their own. Make it bigger. Stronger. Um, and then somebody said, grow up. Give London a break. It's, it's got an eye. Just let it have its eye. 
Anyway, they've still got one of the, the plastic on cord, but it's um, it's very modest compared to the London Eye. <laughs> hey, listen, it's our chance to big up this beautiful city, and it is. I live here, um, and uh, and it's by choice, despite what many of you might think. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, playground, and particularly today, and indeed this weekend, where we hand ourselves over to a cycling festival. The last three days, Matt, it's marvellous. It's wonderful. It's one of the... Uh, I think it's the... Correct me if I'm wrong, the largest mass participation, participation, if I can get my words out right, in the world. It's easy to say than participate. It is, it's a tough one. But uh, of course, this event, as is the, uh, the Ride London, um, oh, well, the Ride London, sorry, Classic, all part of the legacy of the Olympic Games. Uh, obviously, Rio this year, 2016. But it seems only a couple of years ago we had the London Olympics, but it was a whole Olympic cycle ago. And again, this is the legacy event, and what a wonderful legacy event. This event, this women's event, continues to grow in stature. And this, of course, is the first time it has got world tour status, and it is fully deserved. If I had to guess, and I will, uh, Lizzie Williams, she is given to going off from some kind of distance. I'm probably going to be proved wrong, but uh, Orica AIS really are a big part of women's cycling. It's nice to see that they've kept the original livery as well, and she is going for it. And in fact, it's Alexandra Manley. <laughs> there you go. But Lizzie was thinking about it as well and clearly gave her the nod. <laughs> Away she goes. He double corrected it. Well, Amy Peters just taking it up at the front there for Wiggle High Five. Just trying to keep that pace high. After a flurry of attacks, the peloton's now settled down into this rhythm. So Wiggle High Five happy to try and keep things together. And at last, we get a view of Kirsten Ville. She's dead centre. And if you uh, draw your line across Cipollini, the yellow here, You'll find Kirsten Wild in dark blue in the middle. And she is, uh, she's wearing number, um, Kirsten Wild number 51. See if you can pick her out. Um, she is um, an enormous figure, both in terms of stature and efficacy. On days like this, she is extremely effective. There she is on the right-hand side of the roads, just towards the uh, bottom centre. It's a blue livery, just uh, bottom of your picture, almost right now. Um, it's a blue livery with a white patch upon her back and she is uh, doing a bit of meerkatting sort of dead center for my mind Kirsten Wild is the biggest danger here she can go on long attacks she can sustain a great deal of power from distance and quite frankly on the mall and with a drag you're gonna need that kind of power and technique you certainly are I think she has to be one of the standout favorites but I think she'll be pushed very close there's a couple of French riders they haven't talked too much about the Poitou Chahon team they've got Roxanne Fournier and Pascal Gillon fifth and sixth in La Course respectively they'll be looking to do something as well of course uh, Hannah Barnes the British road race champion riding for Canyon Tramp we've also got the very very rapid jerk from the Italian squad Ali Cipollini Marta Bastianelli and Issa Cucinotta they're the team just at the front at the moment. And then, of course, we have Ashley Norman from Cervelo Bigler Pro Cycling. Leah Kirkman is indeed very quick too, as is Jenik Ensing, the Dutch road champion. Well, she was, sorry, second in the Dutch road championship. So lots and lots of fast riders here. There's Hannah Barnes, about 10th or 15th wheel there, number three, with that iconic white jersey with the red, white and blue stripes. And what if that would be, or something quite amazing, if she was to win with the stripes on the mall today. Good move here by Jenna Kodavar. Here she is of uh, uh, the Netherlands. Three champions, including two twice champions of Lucinda Brand and Roxanne um, Netherman, but also Anuska Costa, who currently wears the uh, Netherlands tricolor on board with uh, Lucy Garner. Just uh, looking back from uh, Wiggle High Five. Uh, Rochelle Gilmore's, uh, Rocky Gilmore's team, she's done a, an amazing job. In fact, Rochelle really, I think, part of the almost relaunch and rebranding of, of women's cycling, if that's fair to say, um, really very much part of a, a, a highly professional outfit. And Rochelle Gilmore, um, superb manager and indeed developer of that great, great team. Well, Lucinda Brandt, um, they dangled the carrot and um, they wear orange upon their sleeve and Lucinda Brandt is absolute class and she's decided to engage in the chase. She's headed up the road. We've seen Team GB as well with Emily Kay uh, just uh, dwelling on the back as well. Still uh, not 
tempted to make a move. I think it's uh, it's fair to say Dame Sarah's story uh, still here just for the time being. But while others are uh, busy, I, I guess, burning their energy, trying to get into a decent place, particularly for some of the hairpin turns that we have. This is uh, a 90 degree off Great George Street back to Parliament Street. We'll head past a few moments time uh, various memorials i don't think is it the cenotaph down here i don't think so i think that's uh, i may well be wrong in fact i am there we go uh the, past the cenotaph then it is and then up uh, whitehall onto uh, trafalgar square and then we head up the strand once more um there's absolutely no respite throughout the whole of this course uh, it does pitch up whenever you have a river running through when you head down to it you're naturally going downhill uh, unless my physics have got me into a strange place. And then we head back up gently, rising to the Strand, and start playing with uh, uh, the Mall. And then Constitutional Hi Constitution Hill is exactly that. It is a kick-up and a nasty one. We saw one of the early breaks just almost uh, dismantling on that drag, and they'll be there fairly soon. Once again, we, uh, we sail by Trafalgar Square and uh, Lord Nelson keeping a, an eye on everybody else. Just the one you understand. Uh, they'll head up uh, the Strand, take the hairpin, and then it's back to Trafalgar Square. Now, this is a great attack point, and Aston have decided that maybe this is the time to do exactly that. Just uh, heading up oh, on a technical lap. About the last time that you want this, is this Lisa Klein? This is um, Lisa Klein. Yeah, yeah. Um, can't see where her problem lies at the moment. It's front it puncture. Lo it looks like a back wheel puncher, actually, Carlton. You do see the tyre starting to deflate at the back. Shimano neutral on the case very quickly. That's a traditional sign. If a rider raises their hand, the commissaire will then shout for the uh, neutral service to come up. But as we have the puncher at the back with Klein, we've got attacks off the front. And as you said, Carlson, it is Asner who have attacked. Also, there is a rider from Rally Cycling, the American squad, just rounding that corner. The bunch only just a couple of seconds behind, but they're slowing, grinding down to a halt while these other riders are really picking up the speed. And due to the ferocious, ferocious pace, there's several riders already being distanced at the back of the peloton. So next time by, uh, with the, at the start-finish point, we will have 38.5 kilometres remaining. Is that right? I'm finally on the right lap. Seven to go will be the next time <laughs> through, yeah. Thank heaven for that. It, thank goodness Matt's here with his thumb counter. He, he basically counts people off. into the nightclubs. Um, in, you know, in I've a former life. I've got me clicker. And he's still got his clicker. I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go anywhere without me clicker. <laughs> What would we, what would we do without uh, Matt on occasion? So Savella, big La Pro Cycling, um, have also made it in here. Is that's not lots of Lepisto, is it? No. No, it's Stephanie Paul, the German. Excellent. Just driving through now, just rounding this corner. Furtive glances behind to see if they've managed to open up a bit, a bit of a gap, and they certainly have. Riding very, very well, and again, once more, they hit the mall. Stephanie Paul looks over her shoulder and wants some assistance, gets it almost immediately. Um, they have got lots of Lepisto within this uh, team. You saw the Finn very busy early on. She's got a good sprint finish on her as well. I think if, you, if the early break wasn't going to make it, probably a little bit optimistic with such a distance to be run. 12 times 5.5 laps. Uh, so over 60 laps at the top. And here we are. Drexel Paul and Alar it is. Erica Alar from the uh, rally team. Good to see all well, the several American teams in this field. But Rally looking very, very good. And I tell you what, it's the team of BTC City Ljubljana. They've been very aggressive so far in this race. They're happy to take up the pace mating, making there's the arrowhead and the formation just behind. Riders still really trying to struggle. Many, many riders, Carl, and actually struggling to move up to the head of the peloton. Sprint lap, uh, another preem, and it's these. Uh this trio that are going to be going for it. Uh, good work as well to extricate themselves at a perfect place. Erica Allah, by the way, an American for uh, Rally Cycling. And despite um, what you might think, uh, Rally, a brand that kind of crossed the Atlantic uh, after being a, a solid British Midland um, manufacturing team, um, formed uh, various professional teams, incidentally, uh, indeed, both, uh, both sides of the Atlantic. And the name kind of stuck as being a, a successful brand in the United States and is still, of course, uh, very much part of women's cycling. This is assembling itself into a fighting force. If we can get 20 riders here, that's where our winner may come from. Well, what's happening at the moment, as we see uh, the view from the rear of uh, Lucy Garner's bike, 
Great to see. You can just see the tyre there spinning in the lower portion of the screen. Gives a great impression. Gives a real insight into what goes on in the middle of the peloton, how chaotic it can be. But just look at the shape again. The front of the peloton spread all across the road. A few riders there from Team Liv Planter in that black green with the two white stripes just down the front. They're trying to maintain control, as are the very strong squad of Wiggle High Five. But these three riders now moving clear of the peloton. Looks like it could be the most... Well, the most significant break of the race so far. Looks like it, and uh, I think this may well be accepted, especially with uh, over 30 kilometers to go. It's uh, quite a fighting force, this one, just having a look down it at the moment. Number uh, 194 is uh, Rosanne Zlik. She's part of it. She's got teammate as well, which is uh, Royan Marcus. And uh, indeed, I'm, I'm just looking at the uh, spread further behind. It's reassembling almost as we speak in the woodland. It's 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 as if, Matt, there was uh, there was too much quality up front, and in fact, it wasn't thinned down enough. And in order to take any kind of advantage at a moment such as that, you'd have to engage an awful lot of power. And so they've decided to just keep their powder dry at the moment and maybe go for it a little bit later. Yeah, well, that uh, break was uh, clearly neutralised quite quickly. We're just showing the amount of firepower there is. Some of the bigger teams, ooh, a little bit of a, almost a touch of wheels there just towards the back of the peloton. Thankfully, everybody stays upright. But a great shot here. There's going to be some wonderful photographs, some wonderful memories from this race. Big shout out to Emily B, by the way. She's on the she's on the strand. Emily B, 78. Um, and in fact, I think that was Emily just giving us a wave there. She's listening to Eurosport while she's watching this. What better place to listen to? What a better place to listen in the sunshine. You can hear the Steady. whir of the bikes, feel the breeze as the riders disturb the air as they cut sunshine. through. You can, it's just wonderful, wonderful. But Get sun, out and watch sunshine. Bike where, where, well, where, there's not where, much sunshine. <laughs> it's it's rather diffused, isn't it? Somewhat somewhat occluded <sighs> today. We had San Sebastian sun. earlier on, maybe that's what you're thinking of. Possibly. Yeah. But it's, it's a warm day, it's a balmy day in London, about 23, 24 degrees. Balmy's the word. Here we are, um, slightly crazy as well. I think you've possibly got to be on occasion if you want to uh, uh, do something dramatic here. Julia Soak uh, of uh, Team Liv Planteur. There's a couple of lives here. Um, there's, uh, there's them. Uh, there's Side Lance Pro Cycling as well. Not quite sure about that one, but uh, C-Y-L-A-N-C-E. Um, they had uh, Shayla Gutierrez, the Spaniard, who was going for it a few moments ago. I see some of the ministry buildings here, which is where, um, you know, a click of heel and a raise of an eyebrow can quite often start a coup somewhere in the world. You have to be careful. There we are. In my imagination. <laughs> there we are down uh, Great George Street. Matt is perplexed. Uh, discombobulated, somebody saying. Matt, you've managed to squeeze it into the commentary so far. I think it was quite early in the race when I described the uh, the camera angle. Well, the, 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 yeah, the camera angle as the motorbike rounded the top of the strand. It did make me feel slightly nauseated. Thankfully, I'm back on cue. I've had a sip of tea. I'm all right now. Good lad. Definitely yeah. not discombobulated so, at the present the, time. Thanks for the tea, by the way. Sick of coffee. Um, bless him, Sean Kelly would uh, would always de deliver a long co coffee on the uh, Tour de France, but well, sometimes all you want is a Matt Stevens cup of tea. He, he gets the perfect balance. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, talking of tea, I don't think there'll be many cups of tea in those bidons, but uh, None taken. rushing past the feed zone. They also need a feed zone as Danny King just starts to accelerate down the centre for Wiggle High Five. She's had a fantastic season so far, just outside the top 10 in the women's tour, 11th overall there. Very consistent throughout the season. Great just foil as well, Matt, for uh, Chloe Hosking, who's had such, uh, done such great work, including, of course, victory at La Course, uh, the Tour Indeed. de France. Indeed, oh, a wonderful victory by Chloe Hosking there. She'll be one of the, uh, well, the marked favourites. That's why we're seeing Wiggle uh, High Five, making sure if they don't have representation in any of these breakaways, making sure they're at the head of affairs, helping to contribute to the pacemaking at the front. But clearly nobody willing to attack. Since as soon as we've had already four laps of this course, I think many riders are thinking, well, it's extremely difficult to stay away. Perhaps the best bet is to just wait and watch. So we've almost got a little bit of an entente cordiale in the peloton. A fast pace being set, but nobody now willing to break out just at the moment. No, it's uh, settle yourselves down time. And I think this is going to be a hiatus until we get to about three laps to go. That'll be 16 and a half remaining. Attack points, to my mind, Matt, it's going to be up, up beyond Trafalgar Square here, where the strand, where they take a cut back on the strand. Um, this is uh, the point right now where they come back to Trafalgar Square. 
I think there's a series of curves here that will favor a breakaway, provided they've got the legs from about 18k out. I think they'll probably start going and then uh, cross the line with 16 and a half, three laps remaining. Or do you think it's going to be later? Who knows? Oh, it's a great quandary that we're going to ponder. Let's have a ponder. Here we go. How was your ponder? It was quite a good ponder. And what I have pondered upon is that this is a very, very fast and tactical, tactical race. Great bit of corner in there. Do you see that? See the way Anuska Kos has just rounded that corner. Talking of attack points, as Kos just rounds that corner, opening up a few lengths due to that very, very skillful cornering technique she's adopted. That's going to be, be crucial later on. And yeah. Anushka Costa is just the foil that uh, some other long rangers from her team. I think, essentially, Rabo Liv are going to have to rely on that because I think in an out-and-out -out sprint, they're going to fall to Vils or Chloe Hoskins, uh, maybe Tiffany Cromwell, Hannah Barnes, who knows? Indeed, well, it's a sprint lap now, so that's why we're seeing these riders just really attacking this finishing straight now. Another rider just at the front there. Looks like Alexis Ryan just sat second wheel behind the rider from Astana, who's going to take this sprint, looks like the Astana rider, really accelerating hard. Going to get beaten, I'm afraid, and uh, coming through very, very late on. B-Pink, you know, have been great, and so have Canyon Sram. Well, that's uh, Alexis Ryan, I think, the wow. American. Managed to go clear. It is Ryan. It is from Canyon Sram Racing. Well, she's um, gone straight over the top of that move. Sorry to cut a cross card. She accelerated, right. won the points, won the cash, and has kept the effort going. A real textbook move there. Quite often you see riders going over the top, but she's won the points, continued with her effort, and opened up a really nice gap, putting a lot of the other riders under some pressure here. Mm. You know, once I, 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 ate, uh, uh, I, ate a, I ate a pizza, which, had, which was with octopus ink, and had some uh, uh, blue Calloa um, liqueur. And um, when I saw it for the second time, it looked a bit like Canyon Sram Racing. Do you know what? I think the Canyon Sram kit is it's rough it's terrible. Kit. Canyon Sram. I actually like it. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to disagree <laughs> with you. I think it's one of the best kits in the world. Not just in women's racing, really? in men's racing as well. I actually think oh. it's really cool. Right. Okay. So well. there you go. Sorry about that. I just had to put, get, get, I nailed my, color, my colours to the mast. And it, indeed, it is those colours. There she is. Alexis Ryan sat second wheel. <laughs> and it's all back together. Yeah, but meanwhile, each to their own. Each yeah. to their own, of it course. It was a hell of a pizza. Um, Ryan, um, uh, Bertizzolo and Lucinda Brand again also very much towards the pointy end here as they come back past Buckingham Palace. No flag, you'll notice. Uh, the Royal Standard is not flying because um, apparently it's fluttering over Windsor this weekend. Oh, she wish. She, she's uh, yeah. obviously uh, having the weekend away. That's a rather... Uh, a rather yeah. yeah, she's gone. She sailed. Um, and she's out of town. Out of the pack and going for this, uh, Lizzie Williams uh, just dialing in some power and it's being matched at the moment. That's Scandalada. Seen a lot of her on the World Tour in the past, and she just kicks on as well. This is quality up towards the front, enjoying this, and still the Dutch champion is not to be silenced here. Nitschke Kostner wants to be part of any move that's going to happen. It's hard to happen around her, unfortunately. She's going to have to push on if she wants to be part of this. Two, four, six, seven riders now uh, just breaking clear. Have we finally got the move that's going to stick here? Well, man? this is an interesting move. Did you see uh, Anuska Kost just swung over, then it was her teammate, Jan Koriva. Also from the Netherlands, who accelerated straight past, but just look at this line of riders now, really strung out, just around Buckingham Palace. Riders still rounding that corner, big gaps between the wheels, some real high speeds now that we're seeing. Riders willing to attack, and it is on these sections of the course that the riders then slow down and accelerate away. I think the race is going to split, if it's going to split, on either the dead turn at the Strand or the dead turn up Constitution Hill, because it seems to be that's where most of the damage is caused, and also the opportunity arises on those sprint laps as well. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see your Strand and Constitution Hill approach. This is Monopoly, you know. <laughs> and I'm going to raise you a Whitehall Trafalgar Square entree. Wow, look at that for pace! You know, Costa is absolutely flying. flying today doing a fantastic job and look at how much uh, aero assist she's offering up here uh, quite frankly I, I think with that much aero assist I, I could probably keep up I think it's Leah Kirkman that uh, the Canadian that's uh, that's riding on here we're gonna have to take ourselves a brief break that may well be a coming back together but intentions are being laid bare at the moment I can't wait for this one it's gonna be terrific Anushka Kostner has 
used as a foil. Corinna Lechner from BTC City, Ljubljana. She went off the front, and once again, Anushka Kostna could not help herself but close down the gap. As soon as she uh, had passed Lechner, she went straight into her slipstream, round her, and sped on. And she's keeping the hurt on absolutely everybody. This is Luigi Gardner at the moment, just looking back at Micah uh, Kroger, the German champion, and it's causing all kinds of splits. Now, I think Anushka Kostner here, Matt, is doing a job on behalf of her teammates, potentially Lucinda Brandt or maybe Roxanne uh, Netherman. We'll see. It's, she's certainly being brave. Well, she's certainly 20 years of age. She's the senior Dutch uh, road champion. She's also fifth, or she's also fifth in the individual time trial championship. So she's uh, obviously got a very, well, she's obviously got a wealth of talent, clearly feeling in very good form. But clearly she's either, on the one hand, very confident that she can hold off this field, although I do think that's a very, very big ask. But what she's also doing is softening up the field because they know she's a danger and she's forcing the other teams to chase. She clearly isn't happy with the status quo as things are. She's not happy just to leave this to a bunch sprint. She wants to soften up the sprinters' team, teams and she's doing a very, very good job at the moment. But she's been caught on this occasion. She sits back, just second wheel now, in that uh, raw... I do love the, uh, the Netherlands champion's jersey. Great. Amy Peters on the nose here, Matt, doing a terrific job of uh, matching the pace. This is a big drag back for everybody else. And once again, the Finnish champion can't be kept down. Uh, Lotta Lepisto of uh, Cervelo Bigler Pro Cycling also wants to get involved on the Hornings. It's a, an absolute fest at the moment. Uh, a feast of excitement for us, but... Um, nobody being allowed off the leash. No, nobody allowed off the leash at all. And the rider you can just see in the centre of the screen, that's Alice Barnes. We saw the view from the, uh, the bike of Hannah Barnes from Canyon Shram, and now it's drop cycling. She's the under-23 British road champion, is Hannah Barnes. She finished uh, in the medals the other night as well in the Elite Circuit Race Championship. She's an extremely talented rider, finished second to her sister in the road championships. But putting herself in a good position, having a sip from her bottle at the moment, but should it come down to a sprint, she, should, she could be very dangerous indeed. But remember, just a few, uh, few months back, Carlton, when she won the, uh, the London Nocturne, mm. she attacked with over half distance still to go. It was a hell and of a range, solo to a, a magnificent <laughs> victory, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame that day. We didn't really see the best of London, I must say. We were, we, we sort of felt like we were um, uh, in an industrial zone in, in Daventry. No, nothing against Daventry industrial zone, but um, we're expecting to see St Paul's that day. Today... London has been lit up by the sunshine that Matt called for earlier, and it's finally arrived. Uh, we've got some sharpened shadows here, and it's an absolutely beautiful backdrop. When the Tour de France came here, Matt, as well, um, I think everyone was... Their breath was taken away, quite frankly. And when we started in Yorkshire, dropped down, we had a stage that finished here. And ever since then, it's had a special place in the hearts of uh, British cycling fans, certainly. I think it's more than the hearts of British cycling fans, although that clearly does have a place now. I think, I mean, what a showcase this is for cycling fans and uh, and casual viewers the world over. It's, uh, you know, London is a very special place. This is uh, one of the tourist centres of the world, as we see one of our most decorated Olympians just on the back there, just biding her time at the moment. Now, she is a rider, Dame Sarah Story, who is very capable of holding off a field, but uh, sensibly not going away too early. She's very confident in her ability, just sitting back, keeping out of trouble a little bit, and perhaps we'll see a late effort from her, but she's got a very strong team. Grace Garner, Sarah Headley, Sharon Laws is there, Claire Rose, who's in really good form, and Nicole Murring, but uh, Dame Sarah's story, clearly the talismanic figure of that squad. And Matt, just a, uh, a phenomenal um, marshaller of the team's spirit as well. Drop Cycling did a great job in the Matrix Fitness Series uh, this year, and Dame Sarah's story, when called on to act and support the team, was just such a linchpin, such a solid bedrock. Oh, definitely. Well, she's uh, still you know, one of the strongest riders in the peloton, but because she's got so much experience, I was chatting to uh, her about a year ago, actually, at the, the velodrome in Manchester, and um, she actually rode the same... Um, well, she, she competed in the same Olympic Games as me in Barcelona before she moved over to cycling. So she's uh, competed across different disciplines. Was, um, that, was that where the, your career paths diverged? Uh, pretty much. We've, we've now <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realise that she's, she's been on the scene for so, so long. Uh, and, of course, she's now a mum as well, but still fighting 
still you know bringing this team together and inspiring some of the most talented riders and that the, as we as we look at these these riders just rolling through the feed um i mean women's women's cycling on a global on a globe from a global perspective isn't in a wonderful place but domestically as well we've got a wonderfully healthy domestic scene which is only getting better and better and races such as this you know that there are real races that uh, you can build a season around these the tour de yorkshire the, the aviva women's tour this race as well these are the kind of races that inspire youngs to think hey you know i might just go out and buy a bike i might ride my bike dust off the bike in the shed and start competing um it's a wonderful thing to have danger moment coming up we're getting to that point now where uh, some of the field are starting to tire the better athletes uh, is it is it, are we allowed to say that the stronger on the day are deciding to go for it and this is where you're going to get the rolls of the dice i thought mika kroger earlier on just uh, teeing herself up she'll be working for tiffany cromwell and hannah barnes uh, but right now orica ais are also going to start to uh, uh, try and soften up everybody this will be for lauren roney ultimately their sprinter but um, Lizzie Williams can go very, very long. We saw uh, Alexander Manley also uh, pushing on earlier on. And this is a perfect time to attack. Exactly what we said. The rest of the field is compressed, trying to stay on their bikes. And it gives you an escape. It does. It just attacked about 200 metres before the corner. She could uh, pick her line. Took up a lot of speed. That's Jessica Allen. So she's in full flight. Gets very, very low on the bike. Does Alan very, very aerodynamic, looking good at the moment. It's Lizzie Williams, actually, who is the uh, the one who went well in uh, uh, right. Santos. She's the one that's going to be working for uh, Lauren uh, uh, Roney a little bit later on. And I thought it might be Lizzie. Uh, um, uh, Alexander Manley went earlier, but uh, Lizzie, in a moment like this, is so powerful. Now, look at absolutely no look back whatsoever. She's trying, she's got a strategy, she knows how to deliver it, and that's by just uh, almost putting everyone else to the back of your mind and doing your own thing. She's superb individual time trialist as well on her day, and she's getting into that mode right now, if not the position, certainly the mode. She keeps a very low profile as well, does uh, Lizzie Williams. Um, she uh, went well in uh, um, uh, Santos, don't forget. I think it was stage three there. Well, she's pushing on right now, and she is just eating up the road, and it's for everyone else to follow on if they possibly can. Where is everybody? Jessica Allen, it says. Well, there you are. That's... Uh, that's uh, uh, confounding us, but I believe it's... I still believe it's Lizzie Williams. There they go, pushing on. Well, we look further back down and we're waiting to see um, uh, who uh, it, she's working for. It is Lauren Roney. Um, Tyler Wiles is in there as well. Good protecting work by her. Uh, you can also see a little bit further back. Good chase here. Sort of marking out, if you like, by uh, Cipollini in the yellow. They're uh, covering almost all spots of the road. Now, never really never really sure whether that's just a, a disengaged team or indeed a team that uh, uh, knows how to um, mark out potential breakaway riders and we've got one on our screens right now man we said now this is a very interesting move she's been there clear for about just over a kilometer now just attacked into the corner at the strand looking very comfortable that's the first only but one of the only times she's actually checked round Looked very comfortable and confident when she went for it Wiggle, hunt, well, wiggle high five started to chase. Here's the bunch behind. And just like it's being led by the American rally squad at the moment. But just looking at the formation, perhaps they're not too worried about one single rider going clear at the moment. It's so, so difficult to keep that high pace out in front as we enter a sprint lap. But the ride from Orica AAS, as things slow down slightly at the front, starting to build up a nice little lead. Uh, yes, indeed. You know, the big marker throughout all of this day um, she's a big figure in Micah Kroger. Now, I mentioned her at the top. We haven't really seen too much of her on the screen, Matt, but she has been leading the, the chase on so many occasions, and the German champion is here again doing exactly that. She's just drifting to the centre now to mark out Astana if they decide to do anything. Um, so who's Kroger working for? Tiffany Cromwell and Hannah Barnes. They've clearly got an action plan here today. They're capable of delivering it as well, Canyon Shram. They certainly are. Well, they only have, well, compared to the other teams, most of the teams have uh, have six riders here. Canyon Shram have only four riders in the squad, but a you know, real quality roster. Alexis Ryan, we've already seen her in action, took one of the sprints earlier in the day. Two national champions, you did talk about Mika Kroger, she's the German road champion, and Hannah Barnes, the British road champion, and add into the mix the Aussie, Tiffany Cromwell. 
who finished in the top 10 after a very, very good sprint at La Course, also picked up a, up a stage of the Dura Rosa as well. They have a lot of options, and uh, they certainly have choices to be made. They've got certainly a riders who can sprint, but I have a feeling they'll be looking after the interests of Hannah Barnes. Um, Ali Marshall and Felicity, Felicity Taylor are both with you on Canyon S, uh, uh, SRAM Racing. Um, and it looks like my opinion is in the bin. In the bin, I'm sorry about yeah, that. Do you know what, they're, there's a few people that I've spoken to over the last year since the team has been launched that really do like that kit. But, you know, you're, you're entitled to view, Colt. Well, you know, um, I, I love doing MT in Quebec's black and white stripes. I mean, I'm kind of old school, me. Uh, but plenty of people told me that that was rubbish as well. But, <laughs> but people tell me that was rubbish quite a lot. But, um, I, I try and put that to the back of my head. Um, here we are then. These are our uh, playmakers, if you like. Amy Peters has uh, also uh, decided to come up and uh, join the fun. Um, she's uh, a real move maker when she needs to be, and she's in a move right now. Likewise, Ingrid Drexel of Astana there in the pale blue. Ingrid just, uh, uh, just as you can see, offering up a, a lot of assist here. And it is uh, Jessica Allen, so apologies for that. We were misguided ourselves. Uh, Drexel, Peters and Allen then, our trio. How many well, laps next time by, Matt? Well, next time through, it will be three laps to go. So we just had the klaxon for four laps to go. This is indeed a sprint lap. So the sprint laps are essentially on the odd laps. But this is a good move, moving clear. Now everybody willing to work. But they've only got around 10 seconds or so. There's the peloton just behind, being led by Ali Cipollini, and also on the front. She's ridden such a strong race so far. Anuska Costa, absolutely full of power. Well, we're going to take ourselves a commercial break. Did say that it would come around about three laps to go, Marker. That's exactly what's happened. A real trio of talent up the road. Um, we've been doing our head and hearts. Um, I'm going head... And indeed, Hart, they're both in the same basket as far as I'm concerned for Kirsten Vild. I just love her style, as she's a very attacking rider. The brake, by the way, was uh, reabsorbed while we're on the brake. And this is another attempted push right now. So I'm going to go for Kirsten Vild from High Tech Products. We see nothing of her. So I'm hoping she's... that uh, she dials it in a little bit later on. Matt's head says uh, Chloe Hosking, and his heart says Hannah Barnes. Well, at the moment, the road says Anushka Costa. Look at this turn of speed from Costa. She's got Tiffany Cromwell just on her wheel. Who's going to take the sprint? Cromwell goes for Canyon Tram, the Aussie. And it looks like she's about to be swept up. Who's going to take this one? Oh, just on the right-hand side. Oh, no, I think it was a rider from Orica AIS. I think it was, too. Who just took the sprint there. We'll get confirmation of that in was a few moments' Lauren time. Was it Lauren um, Lauren Roney, big amount of power when she needs to dial it in. We'll get the uh, confirmation for you in a few moments' time. Great Lined motion, across yeah. the road. And uh, Anushka Costa has been in just about every move so far. And I think it was Orica that gets some, uh, gets some more beer money for later on. It's there really, are soft drinks available. It's good. These, these sprints, I think, you know, they're a really interesting factor of a race like this because there's so much prize money on offer. You can't not have a go but you know what we've seen there we've seen riders of the caliber of tiffany cromwell going for the sprints um she's a rider that could do well on the overall but if you sprint on too many occasions it can really take it out of you so it's quite interesting you, you're going for curse and wield when you look at the or sarah roy actually who took it from brand and lepisto from Sevilla bigler um Kirsten Bild has stayed extremely quiet. It's as if she's not even uh, managed to infiltrate any of these breakaways. It's as if she's just playing a waiting game. And as you said, looking at her attributes, looking at the kind of race she's won in the past, this finish on the mall, it's flat, it's wide, it's extremely fast. It uh, definitely, it, 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 without a shadow of a doubt, will suit her attributes down to the ground and the way she sprints. Most definitely. Um, yeah, Kirsten Bills is such a powerhouse that I don't think she's going to be as drained as others on this uh, constitutional hill drag. I uh, see a lot of very breathy looking riders here because it's been incessant, the pace. They've been putting fires out, brake fires, it, it, if you like, all over the place, Matt. Um, it's been an effort today, real proper piece of racing. I, I've loved it. Well, it's been fast. We've had no... Well, we've had several breaks, we've had some extremely aggressive races, some really classy riders getting into some moves, but nothing's really gone close. I think the biggest lead we've seen is just hovering around 10 seconds. That's just due 
to the uh, the pace being set uh, at the head of affairs. And nobody wants anything to go clear. I think many of the teams, because of the because of the park or because of the sort of uh, the terrain that suits suits the sprinters. This is really a bit of a sprinter's race, and I think uh, that's why we're seeing it all staying together, because uh, there's too many teams here with interest at trying to protect their sprinter for the finish. Shadow's getting longer here today. And indeed, the, um, the sun just starting to flare ever so slightly, as you can see on our camera lens. Uh, Peloton Watch has been busy today, so Lauren Rowley is not even in the race. Well, you know, when you're given a start list, you kind of believe it. So, PW, um, what do you want me to do? They head into the woodland area and, um, yeah, you know, hand out a proper start list. That's what I say. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got a, we've got a couple of issues with our start list, but yeah. uh, unfortunately, we'll uh, rectify those as we go. Yes, I think PW is about to go silent. Um, so, three laps to go, and uh, there we have it. 16.5 um, kilometres remaining to us today. Well, let's, ho let's hope that uh, some of the names <laughs> are accurate. Uh, they head along the uh, red tarmac that is uh, the mall. Um, sort of died as such to sort of mimic a red carpet leading up to Buckingham Palace. There you go. And you can see the uh, stills photographers uh, getting a a lens full right now. It's been uh, a joyous backdrop that we've been playing with today. Indeed, uh, those who are riding for our entertainment are doing a fantastic job. Um, so, Matt, are you, um, are you going to start freeloading on my Kirsten Wild choice? Well, uh, I think I've already, uh, I've already picked the rider that I think is going to win, uh, and that I'd like to, and I'd like to win. Um, but I think Kirsten Will will not be very far. I think Kirsten Will will definitely be on the podium. It's just at what step on the podium it'll be. But uh, she has been notable by her absence, but that just suggests to me she's saving as much energy, energy as she can. We've even seen, we've not even seen her high-tech uh, team up or near the front too much. They're clearly making sure that she is protected as possible so she can save everything for the finale. We saw that when she won the Tour de Yorkshire. We saw a very aggressive animated race, but the only time that Kirsten Bild hit the front was with about 200 metres to go when she took victory on the day. And that's when you have an out-and-out -out sprinter on your squad. That's what you have to do. You have to uh, have to play a canny race. You have to protect the attributes that you've got. And if you, we've seen Kirsten Bild riding in the top third of the field, but hardly ever sort of putting her nose into the wind. And that's hardly surprising because this finish really is built for her. There she is right in the centre, about 20th wheel at the moment, just rolling round with the black sleeves and the white kit. Um, big move from Bastianelli, other side as well, uh, Cucinotta, uh, both from Ali Cipollini in the yellow. Uh, there is uh, Bastianelli on the left-hand side of your screen, and over the other side, in fact, it's uh, Malo Gorzata. Um, good team. It's uh, Cucinotta just here with uh, Dame Sarah Story, and in fact, just riding in alongside Anuska Kostner in the uh, Netherlands national jersey towards the rear. Same Sarah's story, still at the back just for the time being. But um, looking deeper into this group here, Matt, it looks like uh, the teams are starting to get themselves at least into assault order with three laps remaining. They certainly are. Well, Canyon Tram are really to the head of affairs there. We've got Tamika Kroger, Tiffany Cromwell, and uh, Hannah Barnes and Alexis Ryan all near the front. And this is the first time I think we've hit the top of the strand going in that wide. The last few laps we've seen a really aggressive entrance to that corner. Riders trying to use it as a springboard, and I think this is, again, Rabo Live Women's Cycling Team trying to use that corner to their advantage, because if you've got a particularly strong kick, this is where you can really put some pressure on the bunch. But uh, that was a slightly half-hearted attack out of the corner there, and it's still all together. I don't think we're, we're now going to see a, a real attack until about eight kilometres remaining, because I think anyone who goes too early here is going to run out of resources. They've, they've invested so much into this day. It's been breathless. It certainly has. Well, it's uh, Kelly van, de van den Steen from Top Sport Vlander at Etics on the front. The bunch all together. Just about two and a quarter laps to go now. Gosh, well, it says three. Matt's got his night color bouncer kicker out, a clicker out. <laughs> kicker? You were a gentle bouncer, I understand. More negotiation than... I'm a lover, not a fighter, Carl, you know that. <laughs> How would I know that? 
<laughs> Here we go as they, they cut through Admiralty Arch, which you have to admire. Um, actually, if you, uh, if you look at the top of this ancient building, um, it uh, displays some very modern air conditioning units, so uh, not entirely old school. As uh, we head back up this, uh, this fabulous course, Incidentally, 100,000 people on uh, the streets of London enjoying the closed roads of the circuit this it's, weekend. It's fantastic. I mean, the aerial shots have given us a great indication of the amount of people out. Just look at the finishing straight here in the mall. People banging the boards, as we see so often, urged on by the announcer, Joe, on the line. But it's Liv, or team of Liv Planter, that take it through now. Leah Kirkman, their team leader, they just roll through. And as we now enter two laps to go the other team joining them on the front in a similar kit in the green is Silans Pro Cycling but the first time we've just seen the pace knocked off a little bit I think these riders can't have got the measure of each other they know that it's very hard for anything to stick out there so it's almost as if they've not called a truce but they're now playing a waiting game but what this does provide as soon as the pace knocks off them there are one or two riders who think well I could try and go for it but I think a lot of the teams now having seen the, the, the first 10 laps of this race I think they're increasingly thinking this could head towards a big bunch of sprint Nikki P says my heart shouts out for Danny King she more than deserves it she does she's had a cracking season so far and why isn't she going to the Olympics well it's uh, it's been a, a bit of a moot point I mean clearly Danny Danny was very very disappointed not to get picked and when you look at her results um, throughout this year you can you can understand her frustration and of course she is an Olympic champion as well mm. kind of Olympic champion in the team pursuit it's the course, selection but, uh, process essentially that tripped her up and she wasn't happy neither was I and neither was uh, a lot of people else. no uh, it, it did I, Again, uh, Olympic selection, because of the, the the size of the team, there's only a very, very small team, a very small or a very select amount of riders go. I think there's, there, are, there are always going to be riders that are unfortunately disappointed. But I do fully understand uh, Danny King's disappointment. But do you know what she's doing? Look at her. She's sat on the front. She's racing. The Olympics, for her, for this year, are done, are done and dusted, as it were. But she's getting on with her job as a pro cyclist. She's hitting the front, and she wants to try and win this race, either for her or for the team. Kirsten Ville's in about P10 at the moment. She's nicely screened and she's, she's, uh, she's a big presence. So she has to work hard at uh, being screened, quite frankly. Uh, there's Danny King. If she's on the front right now, surely this is going to be work for Chloe Hosking. Do you know what? I, as I, I just talked a few moments ago. I think increasingly the teams are thinking this is going to come down to a bunch of sprints. So I think we'll see several teams who've got protected sprinters contribute to the pacemaking at the front to try and ensure that this bunch stays together. So they sweep through Admiralty Arch and the crowd are treated to a raging bunch sprint. Kirsten Vild moves up to about fifth place at the moment. She's uh, solidly within that little phalanx, that triangle up front. Uh, but she's not showing herself at all, Kirsten Vild. She's playing a very clever game at the moment. In fact, high-tech products, uh, they're white, blue and black. As a team, they've been working to hide themselves. Welcome back. The world according to Len. Len's world are here. They're in uh, positions uh, three and four. Also working very, very hard at the moment. Savello Bigler Pro Cycling working for the Finnish champion here. Lotto Lepisto is extremely quick. Was runner up in Paris, you may remember, when she was beaten by Chloe Hosking of uh, Wiggle High Five. Chloe and uh, her teammate Danny King have been doing a lot of work. Others also working hard. Um, Kroger, the German champion, has done a lot of softening up, but now it's down to Tiffany Cromwell and Hannah Barnes, a little bit further back, so watch out for them in their multicolored livery, by the way, which is, um, it's, a, it's a strange one. It looks like somebody's had gone mad with a paintbrush. Uh, Liv Planteur as well, with uh, almost looks like giant Alpacin stripes right down the belly, uh, so black with LIV, uh, black and white, and it may well be as clear as that if uh, Leah Kirkman gets a run, the Canadian, they're in a, a very strong-looking lead-out train right now. And they've got a long way to go to protect her, though. 5.5 kilometres out as they'll take the bell this time by. And then it will be one more lap. Uh, just powering into the uh, gentle incline, I think it's fair to say, that we're dealing with right now is uh, uh, Mooma. Um, uh, of uh, the South African just ahead of the Finnish champion as you can see got a wing uh, wing protector as well just at the back and here they come 50 meters from the line at the uh, the main body of the peloton 
Uh, the question is asked, but uh, nobody has the answer just for the time being because everybody is locked together here, Matt. This is very interesting. Savela Bigler, pro cycling team, taking up with still 5.5 kilometers to go. And as you said, Ashley Moorman is on the front. Then we have Lotta Lepisto just in second position. She is in the champion's jersey of Finland. And just behind her is her classic lead-out rider. That's Joel Newmanville of Canada. Very powerful rider in her own right. Here comes the battering ram, Maika Kroger, just uh, on P2 at the moment. Just beds in for Canyon SRM uh, SRAM Racing with uh, Tiffany Cromwell and Hannah Barnes. Won't be too far behind the German champion. As you can see, she's doing a terrific amount of work right now. I don't think this is for Kroger herself. Uh, no, in fact, uh, Tiffany Cromwell is there. So is Hannah Barnes in that sort of uh, uh, overpainted, multicolored, but mostly dark livery. Here comes the green and the white stripes down at the belly, uh, yet again, of Team Liv Planter for uh, Leah Kirkman. I think Lotta Lepisto looks a very good bet for today. Uh, where we're asking ourselves is uh, Kirsten Vilt. She uh, showed herself a few moments ago and then has just drifted back. She's a rangy character. You can almost see her uh, helmet higher, but higher than anybody else as they make a, an approach right now. And so it is that she's in P20, but we're in the middle of this lap and danger is starting to loom its head at the top end of Constitution Hill. Charles, uh, Charles II used to go for his morning constitutional. They'll head back down. It's a slight uh, descent towards Buckingham Palace, which is, explains the red road we're racing on right now. It's a rag to a ball for some of these. Well, Liv Planter still setting that tempo on the front, but look, we've got a rider just attacking on the right-hand side from Rabo Liv women's cycling team in the orange and red kit. She's just dangling a few meters off the front. Very difficult to attack off the front on your own, given the speed of the peloton, given the amount of teams willing to contribute to the pacemaking at the front. But many riders have actually been disengaged from the back of the bumps due to the tempo being set up Constitution Hill. They then into Spur Road, then down Birdcage Walk, they will swing left into Parliament Street, past Whitehall, then up the Strand for the last time before the swoop, that down to uh, Trafalgar Square, under Admiralty Arch, and the finish. And the big question is going to be, who is going to reign victorious? And there, in the middle of your picture, just sat about 20th or 30th wheel, was Kirsten Bild. Very tall rider indeed. Keep a look out for her, as you said, Carlton, in that white and black kit. So here we go then, it's going to be uh, Kirsten Vilt, uh, we reckon, from uh, High Tech Products. Uh, it could well be Chloe Hoskins, of course. Watch out for the very, very dark uh, livery outfit. Uh, she, of course, who won La Course last weekend in uh, uh, the Champs-Élysées in Paris. be great if she can manage to make that count. Danny King has done a lot of work for her, and in fact, the, uh, uh, the darker livery off Wiggle Honda is coming up to the, the fore, and Chloe Hoskins is not that far off the point right now. Uh, Kroger has uh, done her work, it seems, at least for the time being, Cromwell and Barnes from uh, Canyon SRM Racing. Uh, some splash paint, it looks like, across their livery. Here we go. Well, the Canyon SRAM team would definitely well to the fore. Remember, Mikkel Kroger is in the German Champions kit, and uh, Hannah Barnes is the British champion. So although she rides for Canyon SRAM, she's in the British Champions jersey in the white with the red, white, and blue bands. Keep an eye for her. Yes, indeed. Uh, Lotta Lepisto in the national Finnish Champions jersey. I think uh, Savella Bigler Pro Cycling will give Canyon SRAM a, a run for their money. I think Lepisto has uh, shown enough today to certainly be in the reckoning. She was runner-up in Paris. That must have hurt. Chloe Hosking as well, of course, uh, can't be discounted from doing the double, but it would be a double heartbreaker for Lepisto. And she's up here as well, Lepisto, uh, in, uh, it, certainly within the top uh, 10 as we stand at the moment. We're heading back down for a big turn on uh, Great George Street. Well, here, the bunch being led still by Team Liv Planter on the front. The rider in second real wheel for Canyon Tram Racing is the American Alexis Ryan. She's making sure they've got representation at the front. Now, another team moving to the front. This is, we haven't seen this team at the front too much. It looks like the Lensworld team moving up. Very interesting as teams fight for position. This is where things can start to get just a little bit shaky. Here we are, uh, out of the saddle, as you can see, and uh, heading for yet another hairpin. They're all over the place, Matt, are they not? Well, they're just heading up Whitehall. They'll be up the Strand in a little bit of time. It is actually the high-tech products team at the front, the team of your favourite, Carlton Kirstenville. They're looking to try and take things up. 
But again, the formation at the front of the peloton, nobody's still willing to commit. We've only got about two kilometers to go of this race, remember. But very, very interesting to show. Crucial moment here, Matt, as they come up here. Um, you better be at the fore because uh, the escape out of this hairpin is going to be an absolutely vital one. Uh, you need to be, to my mind, in the uh, top 15 here if you're going to make it all the way through. Best place to be is right-hand side of the road. It gives you your best view of the turn, and it's coming up right now. Oh, look at that. Beautifully done. And this is where the gas has to be uh, dialed in, and that's exactly what we're having right now. Vilt's in a great place. She's found herself uh, uh, up towards the fore right now, but she's not by any means the only one. Chloe Hoskins is in about seventh place at the moment. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, she's being led absolutely beautifully at the front. Got a teammate up there, but Chloe Hoskins is waiting to strike. Next to her as well is uh, La Pista. Well, the rider on the front is Tiffany Cromwell of Canyon Shram and Australia. She's driving as hard as she can. Just a couple of wheels behind her is her teammate Alexis Ryan of the United States. Also in the mix, riders from Live Planter too. Only just a few, well, a couple of kilometers still to go, just in the middle of your picture, in the white jersey as well, just on the inside is the British champion, Hannah Barnes. Kirsten Vild uh, is here as well, number 51, looming large, she's, uh, she's in about seventh place at the moment, this is where it starts to unwind, uh, they'll take a, a couple of turns here as they go under Admiralty Arch for the last time, and you'd better be in the top ten about this point if you're going to have a chance, Vild at the moment is about in the tenth place, she's left herself with an awful lot of work to go, Barnes and Cromwell both very much in the frame. The Pistos dropping back. It's not going to be her day for the time being. And here we are. They're starting to cat mouse because energy levels are absolutely in the basement. This is there's been a crash in the centre of your picture. It's all across the road at the moment. It's like Kirsten Bill on the left hand side emerging oh, from the back. And here she comes. Kirsten Bill just picks it up on the right hand side. Powerhouse figure that she is. Is she going to get mucked to the line? Bill gets the drive. She has another look. She has another one. And then she just takes a huge prize. Absolute perfect timing for Kirsten Bild. She kept herself out of the wind. She has a big frame to master that skill. And indeed, she stacked them all up. She knocked them all down and has delivered here in London. Well, what a wonderful ride by Kirsten Bild from the Netherlands and high tech products. It was a very, very cagey sprint indeed. The riders left it very late to open up the sprint. Here it is, just on the left-hand side. She emerges from the pack, taking the win for the very, very first time. It looks like the rider just behind her from Lens World in the white and blue was Nina Kessler. Great ride by Kessler. We'll get confirmation of who got third place on the day. It looked like it might be Leah Kirkman who got third. I think it was, but it is a clear victory. Here's another shot straight down the middle. Well, that's the shot we would have liked first time by, to be honest. But look at that. Kirsten Vilder, in the end, it's a bike length. Just over a bike length there. Great win by Kirsten Bild. Nina Kessler looked like she got second place. Another great shot here. She takes it up with about 150 metres to go, and there was nothing anybody could do about the turn of speed that she had. There she is, just moving through on the left-hand side. The rider's trailing in her wake. And rider 76 just in the center in the white and black that's kessler not one of the favorites but she did very very well to hold on to get second place well i said it was my head and my heart today i like kirsten build and that was fantastic it was we we talked about it didn't we she was uh, your favorite one of the outright favorites to win and when you look at the sort of races that she's won in the past, she took the Tour of Yorkshire in a similar sprint, or the Tour de Yorkshire, should I say, in a similar sprint earlier this year. She's won stages in the past in the, in the Tour of Oman in Qatar. A very, very fast rider, certainly delivered on the day. She won it by just over a length from a very fast finishing Nina Kessler. But a great race, a wonderful advert for women's cycling. And of course, she takes the maximum World Tour points as well. Nearly two bike lengths. <laughs> <laughs> she was just going faster and faster, and that's while celebrating in the last 10 metres. Indeed, she had plenty of time, well, not say plenty of time, but she had time to really savour that moment. 25,000 euros, the richer as well. Good for so, her. So, uh, a wonderfully deserved ride, and an exciting spectacle, a great race. Very animated the first few laps, but then the last couple of laps, we saw things get just that little bit more tactical. Teams moving to the front to keep that pace high, to protect their sprinters. And at the end of the day, it was a sprinter that delivered, and it was Kirsten Field.
Matt, we've got a, a huge uh, weekend of cycling. In fact, it, it, it's uh, another big day tomorrow. It is. It's, uh, it's the, the London Surrey Classic. It's a, well, a wonderful field. We've got uh, uh, some great riders. We've got Ben Swift. We've got none other than Chris Froome riding, although he won't be one of the favourites. Tom Bonin is going to be there as well. Yeah. Andre yeah. Greipel. Some yeah. very, very, it's, it's sort of teeing itself up as a, a real sprinter's classic. Did, did well last weekend, apparently, Andre. He certainly did. Well, there's confirmation. Kirstenville takes it ahead of Nina Kessler, Leah Kirkman as your top three. Cinder Brand just edged out uh, with Gaffon uh, Yeri, Hannah Barnes and Alice Barnes finishing together. I don't think they were hand in hand, unfortunately, but what a dominant performance it was by Kirsten Vilt. I was kind of expecting it, as you've heard. But the way she delivered it was absolutely exceptional. Clinical excellence, I think it's uh, fair to say. Well, we've enjoyed your company and we trust you've enjoyed yourselves here. A couple of bumps and bruises. Nobody fell off today, which is pretty good. Apart from the crash at the finish. Yeah, we don't know who came down. I don't yeah. think one or two riders uh, crashed. But I think the sprint was already well underway. Yes. Um, well, we hope that they all got uninjured. Um, um, no bumps and bruises here in the commentary position. Normally, we're beating each other up about this point, uh, usually with excitement. Uh, there you go. We wish everyone the, uh, the very best. But the very best today, no doubt about her name. Yeah. Great sprint win there from Vild. Look at that. Time to sit up, punch the air with delight. Really savour that moment. Not just winning the race, it's the location of the race as well. As, as she threw her arms in the air, she looks down the mall, got the Union Jacks there, and then Buckingham Palace just in the distance. I think this is the only race that finishes on red asphalt as well. As you said, a red carpet, and it was a red carpet that was rolled out for this rider today. A sprint in truly dominant style. She is one of the finest sprinters on the Women's World Tour, without a shadow of a doubt. And she's truly delivered today. Delighted for her. I hope we get uh, to hear her post-race interview in a few moments' time. It'd be uh, lovely to hear from Kirsten. She speaks impeccable English. And um, you'll see what a sort of gentle character she is, but uh, saves all her aggression for her racing. And what a fantastic performance it was today. No, it was. It's, it's going to be an interesting race, and um, hopefully this is going to be on the race, on the calendar for uh, for uh, for years to come. Of course, the last few years it has been a smaller criterion, and that's been elevated to world tour status. And I believe that we've got Kirsten Wild for us right now. And everyone's waiting for it with bated breath. They certainly are. <laughs> Pensive expressions upon the brows of the crowd there. There we are. Um, I believe that's Prince Albert. He needs a bit of a clean-up, doesn't he? Frankly, the pigeons have got no respect. They haven't. But no, Kirsty Moore, great win. 33 years of age now. Just looking back through her Palmares. She's won the Tour of Qatar four times. And when you look at her stature, that's a race that really does suit the out-and-out -out sprinters. When you look at Tom Bonin's one over 20 stages of the She's men's version of that. Pardon? She's already got a statue. Not, 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 not a statue. Statue. <laughs> but no, she, she does like a good sprint. Was fifth in the women's Netherlands road race this year as well. Took out the Tour de Yorkshire, of course, as we've mentioned. Took a couple of stages of the Energy Wack Tour as well. Won the points classification at the Tour of Qatar, as well as winning the opening stage there. She certainly does pick the big races, and she certainly likes Great Britain. Or at least winning in Great Britain. Great Britain likes her too, believe me. Well, there you see, it's a, a huge photo opportunity as well for uh, all of the teams. If you look uh, a little bit more, uh, a little bit happier than others, I must say. Um, difficult race to master this one, um, Matt. As you say, it had a sort of a feeling of a Kermes, a triple XL Kermes about it. Yeah, like I say, it's a, 
again, I was fascinated when I, f I first got to see see the course here. A, a, a wonderful course, a little bit of everything. You've got a couple of drags, plenty of sections of road to really lay down the power. And of course, those really nasty dead turns, the first of which comes on the Strand, the second of which on Constitution Hill, really makes the leg sting. There's the two sisters, Hannah and Alice Barnes. Hannah on the right-hand side in the British Champions jersey, and there's Alice Barnes just on the left-hand side there. Ninth and tenth on the day, bragging rights on this occasion to the elder sister. And there's well, the point for the intermediate sprints. Well, that's useful. Um, so uh, Lucinda Brand with ten points, uh, Sarah Roy, or Wa, um, on five, and Alex Ryan also with five points today. Um, I, I presume they meant to have a plural on that, intermediate sprints. You would have thought so, wouldn't you, yes. to give it the correct yeah, just, English? Just to be pernickety. Yeah. It's, a, a it's our job occasionally. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's great, though, to see that there's Mick Bennett just walking down there with Andy Hawes, just in the orange jersey. There is, is the course designer, actually, for the, uh, for the Tour of Britain, and they would have been in, instrumental in getting this race here and designing the course, and they've designed a wonderful course. That's why we've got this team here in a BTC city of Ljubljana, taking the opportunity to get a photograph on the mall, because it's not every day that you get to, to, uh, to stand on the mall in your bike kit with nobody else there apart from yourselves. This wonderful, iconic finish straight. It really is wonderful to see. It's a great sport, isn't it? And um, all credit to Mick Bennett, actually, for being uh, a linchpin of it. Indeed. Well, uh, you know, he's, uh, his, his company, Sweet Spot, in conjunction with the London Marathon Organization, formed a company to, who, who bid for this race, the Legacy Race, and, and they're running it. And year on year, it's becoming uh, increasingly more important. As I've said on numerous occasions, this race is now part of the Women's World Tour. No doubt it will be here to stay. It's a unique kind of format as well. As we said, not quite a city centre race. Too small for a Kermes. Therefore, it has its own kind of unique identity. And it was very interesting to see the women, the way the women raced it. Aggressive at first to see if any brakes would stick. But in the end, it really was one for the sprinters. And that's the way the last couple of laps were ridden. Save for one speculative attack from the Rabo Lib women's cycling team. It did come down to a bunch sprint. But a wonderful spectacle, wonderful race. And, and hopefully this event is here to stay. And as you say, we've got the, the men's race tomorrow. And of course, the Sportif as well, where we'll have about, I think it's over 30,000 riders riding around uh, the streets of London and out into the Surrey Hills as well. You going to have a go? Uh, you've done well, it. I've got, you've I've done it. I mean, what, why, well, you why know, do it again? Well, I've, I've, I've got to be in the booth as well for tomorrow, so I can't That's do true. both. I think I'll be in the booth with my cup of tea and me, me wine gums. Thanks for the tea, by the way. No worries, mate. Really top, top, top brewing. Massive congratulations, well done. You made that look very easy. Yeah, it might have looked easy, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It was set up perfectly for a sprint finish for you there at the end. Was that the plan the whole time? Yeah, with our team, the objective was to go for a bench sprint, and uh, it was really hard work to, to keep it all together because a few times there was a little breakaway. But I think it worked yeah, really good, and the team was really strong, and uh, yeah, I was happy to make it up. All right, well, you made it look very easy, as I said earlier. And this whole event to come here to London to do this, that must mean a lot to you. Yeah, it was a really good race. Uh, I looked forward to it for already a few weeks, and I saw this finish line, and I thought, like, yeah, it's my finish line. Amazing. Well, massive, congr massive congratulations to you. Well done. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, it wasn't the most insightful chat, but uh, she seems happy enough, and uh, I'm not surprised. She certainly, well, she seems delighted. She's got a hat full of World Tour points and a pocket full of cash to spread out with her team. It's great. 25,000 euros and the kudos of winning this extremely prestigious race in the inaugural event as well. Well, I think that's it, Matt. Um, tomorrow, what have we got? Well, we've got another fantastic race. Um, we shall see if it finishes in the sprint. The last couple of years, the, uh, the Ride Surrey London Classic has actually finished with a breakaway. Um, a rider from BMC, uh, the Luxembourg rider, whose name escapes me, should have that on the tip of my tongue, won it last year. Um, we had... Uh, 
The year before, it was won by Adam Blythe. He's actually riding for the Great Britain team, not riding for Tinkoff in this uh, in this particular race, riding for a young GB team as the new British champion. And as I've said, we've got Chris Froome riding, although I think he'll be riding in the service of Danny Van Poppel and, uh, and Ben Swift, the two sprinters from Team Sky, have yet to win this race. But it finishes on exactly the same uh, finishing straight, but of course it goes out into the Surrey Hills and goes up Box Hill on a couple of occasions before coming into London. But it uh, should be a fascinating race. This is the venue of my first um, ticket for, for um, uh, well, driving erratically. Do you know Really? That? Yes, I actually went round this memorial in a Triumph Herald convertible uh, <laughs> with my girlfriend and a mate uh, 11 times. I just went round and round, I thought it was great fun. And then a copper pulled me over and gave me a ticket. <laughs> Well, as I said earlier on, you certainly learn something every day, mm. even the, uh, the minor transgressions of the law from yourself as well. <laughs> Eleven times. We were wondering how many we could get before the car <laughs> gave up. Wheels were squealing. Anyway, uh, don't try that at home, kids. It's against the law. I believe you're only around to go, uh, allowed to go round and round about three times before you have to exit. Something like that. Didn't know that. Well, there's a happy chick. Exactly what it says on the tin. I'm just looking through the start list for tomorrow before we uh, end the program. Tom Bonin, as we said, we've got Chris Froome.